I'm Jessie Janae, this is Shipping Things, and today we're going to talk about one of the most common questions I get about packaging. How much should it cost? When making your packaging budget, there's two main factors to keep in consideration. The first and most obvious one is cost. How much should you be paying for your packaging? And the second one is time. Things can save you money, but maybe take you extra time in fulfillment, and that's gonna cost more in the long run. Let's kick things off with cost. In 2012, I hit the shipping big time with my second Kickstarter campaign, where we ended up having to ship out over 2,000 rewards. To be honest, I had actually no idea how much of my money to set aside for packaging. So let me answer your burning question. Drum roll, please. Thank you. The correct answer is you should set aside between one and 3% of your total funds or total revenue for your packaging budget. There are a lot of packaging options within that one to 3%. Let's break it down into tiers. And tier one is all about reliability. What does that mean? It means at bare minimum, you want your package to have the proper padding, support, and security that it needs to get safely from point A to point B. Next up, tier two. Branding. When your package arrives, it's the first time your customer will be physically interacting with your products and with your brand. So you can actually get your logo and get some nice kind of branding and energy on the box itself. But keep in mind that you don't need to plaster your logo everywhere. You can just put on a sticker or some tape, but if you want to get fancy, you could put it on the box itself. As you can see, there's some versatility in how you spend that 1-3% to on packaging. But let's get more specific, shall we? Let's say that we're shipping out a custom beautiful dress that costs $250 to your customer. You may want to spend closer to 3%, which would be $7.50 on all your packaging stuff. How do you get there? Well, you might invest in a custom printed box, custom tissue paper, a beautiful foil printed card or stickers, or other branded goodies for them. Now, on the flip side, let's say we're shipping $20 t-shirts. Nothing wrong with that, but in that case, you might want to spend closer to 1% and get yourself a 20 cent poly mailer. Look, when you're budgeting, it's totally understandable to get caught up on unit costs and just cost compare and say, this box costs three cents less than this one, etc. Keep in mind, folks, that most of your savings, though, and your net kind of overall efficiency is going to come from deeply considering other aspects of your packaging. Like, is that even the right type of packaging? How much does it cost to ship, etc. Your packaging partner can help you with that, so make sure to pick a good one. We've covered costs, but let's talk about time. The fact of the matter is that not all packages are created equal. Some of them are much faster in fulfillment than others. Let me show you. Now, in this situation, we chose to go with custom tissue paper to support the product, but we simply bunched it up as void fill and put the product on top. Now over here, we decided to take the same custom tissue, but actually wrap it meticulously around our product and put a little sticker on top. It's actually the same type of packaging, but in this case, one took twice as long to do as the other one. Now, packaging options that take more time aren't necessarily wrong or bad, but here's what I have to tell you. You need to budget for time. Time is money, people, for real this time, because you're gonna need labor to meticulously wrap each package if you go with this option. When you use it right, your packaging budget can do a lot for your brand. Not only does it ensure that your packages make it from point A to point B safely, but you can also make your brand look incredible to your customers. So people, take that one to 3% and do something incredible with it.